Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Sibi. I'm a health and fitness coach for women in menopause, and I'm a host of this Inspire show. And uh, as you know, I always bring guests who can inspire you in some way. And here today, I have uh, amazing Cindy. Cindy Allen Stuckey. When is my name in there? But Cindy Allen Stuckey. Cindy Allen Stuckey. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, I think you have an interesting life and how your life started. <laughs> Can you tell me your story? Yes, I will. And it's a story that I really hadn't talked about until over the last year or two, actually. So, um, when I, I was one of the first children in the world to have open heart surgery. When I was, uh, when my great grandmother first held me, she said, there's something wrong with this child. She's breathing too fast, her heart's too fast. And of course, nobody paid any attention to her, you know, at all. But, you know, and when you think about it, all the experience that I'm sure she had delivering, you know, babies and everything. So when I was four months old, I ended up in the hospital in an oxygen tent on oxygen. And at that time, um, the medical professionals could not determine if I'd had heart attack or if I, I had pneumonia. And when I was three years old, I started going to um, a, a pediatrician and he referred me to a children's hospital. And I live in Indiana in the United States and it's Wiley Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. And it actually took them a year or so to several years to figure out what exactly was going on with me. And um, that, you know, they came up with, I had, I had two heart defects. And so I had surgery when I was six years old oh. and it was very traumatic because the way hospitals were set up at that time, the parents really didn't have much of any part of the whole process. So, you know, here I am by myself, you know, being called into the examining rooms. And so I was in the hospital for nine days. Parents were allowed to visit on Wednesday and Sunday for half an hour for 30 minutes. Oh, it's it's so it could be hard. Yeah. Very, very hard. And there was one day that of course I was I was six. I knew when they were going to be coming. I mean, that was the highlight of, of my day. I was so homesick. And there was one day they didn't show up. And I waited next to the elevator the whole time, thinking, you know, my 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 mom's gonna come, my mommy's gonna come. And even when I went to sleep that night, um, I told the nurses, I said, I know my mommy's gonna be here, so please, please wake me up. Um, so that happened a long, long time ago. And um, it wasn't until I met my husband, Tim, and was back in with a counselor in therapy again. So I've been in there several different times, and, you know, as we all have working through things. And um, he, you know, and what I told the therapist was, you know, I've met this person, I've met this man that I really, I really, really like, and I think there could be more there. However, his family is much more emotionally functional than what mine is, and I don't know how to deal with it at all, I, I, and I don't want to mess it up. So the question the therapist asked me was, tell me about your abandonment fear. And I said, I don't know anything about it at all. I don't know. And so then she went ahead and said, were you uh, adopted? No. Were you lost as a child? Were you lost? No. Were you in the hospital? And that was when I remembered standing next to the elevator because until then I didn't, it just, it suddenly came back. And what she told me was you need to ask your mother as far as why they didn't come. So I asked my mother and she started crying. And what she said was, when we left, you know, the day that they were there, whether it's a Wednesday, Sunday or Wednesday, 
The doctor met us and said it takes us it takes us several hours to calm Cindy down because she's so upset when you leave. So the solution is don't come to visit her. And my mother said, I need to go tell Cindy. And the doctor said, no, we'll tell her. So when I asked my mother about this, she said, didn't anybody tell you? And I said, I don't know. And even if they had of, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have believed them. So that has been, you know, I, I've had so many challenges. You know, all of my friends, you know, family members would go to, you know, would go to summer camp. Or, you know, they would, you know, they would go spend a couple of weeks somewhere. And I just refused to do any of that. So my self-worth about that was, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Everyone else can do it. And um, so this whole thing with the abandonment fear opened up so many doors and gates and tears and everything as I started realizing what, you know, what had happened, um, what had happened there. And because I felt very ashamed growing up, because for my first six years of my life, I couldn't do it. I couldn't run and I couldn't play or anything. And I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want anybody to know about it because it was what's wrong with me. And that whole thing, as far as, you know, I lived on I lived in, when I went to uni, I lived on campus one year and it was the worst year ever in my life. And again, still, what's wrong with me? So by this counselor asking that question, really started opening up, opening up doors, opening up, you know, for me to remember different things. And um, uh, so, and again, when I said it wasn't until a couple of years that I started even even talked about this. So I reached, I published two years ago, I published a book, um, The Shift Cafe, and my editor and publisher is in England. And as I started talking a little bit about this, she talked me into including it, some, of, some of my story in my book. That was huge for me because I kept, I kept all this hidden, just completely, you know, completely hidden. Um, so really, like I said, it's been only the past couple couple of years that I've started talking about this. And the more I dig into it, and the more I talk about it, and then I found out that this children's hospital was this is their what this year's their 100th anniversary. So I reached out to them thinking, I would think you would want to know my story. And yeah. um I was interviewed interviewed there. And in fact, a long time ago, it was 1956 when I had my surgery. Uh, the very first, the first time that this hospital, this children's hospital, did um, open heart surgery on a child was, are you ready for this? 1956, and my surgery was March 2nd. So I could, I was one of the. I mean, I could have been the first. But what that's really also helped me realize my passion, you know, my mission has always been to empower people to reach their full potential. I started as an elementary teacher and I, a first grade teacher, you know, so the little ones, you know, went into teaching adults, then into business and industry in the whole education and training. So all of this, learning all of this, has really helped me realize that, you know, when when I was, when my surgery was over, you know, I just decided I'm never going to play small ever again. I want to live my life to the fullest. So all of these experiences and the emotions have, unbeknownst to me at the time, have really led me on my whole path and my mission as far as, again, you know, step into the power of your potential. We all have so much potential. So that's kind of how all of this, all of this happened. And, uh, you know, I, I can still cry for that little girl. And in fact, when I went to the, when, when I was interviewed at the children's hospital, it was very emotional for me to drive there. You know, when I walked, when I walked in the hospital, I mean, it's not the same at all, but talk about the emotions 
So when the journalist was interviewing me, at the end, she said, so from all of this, what do you want to say? And what I said was, I want to say to this little Cindy inside that had such traumatic events growing up, I wanted to say, we made it. We did it. We absolutely positively, we persevered. We more than persevered, you know. Um, so anyway, that's that's just some of my background story here. It's so unique. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yes. When when did you realize that uh, um, that you want to live your life fully? That that you you want what is inside of you uh, when it uh, wanted to come out? Yeah, well, it's um, you know, I think of my grandmother. I mean, and you know, once once I had my surgery, I mean, I hadn't been able to run and play or anything. And I remember my grandmother. <laughs> I mean, she taught me to run. She taught me to climb trees and to climb gates. You know, I grew up on a farm. You know, all of these pieces that that I had been missing. And I, I mean, I knew I was missing this and I couldn't do it. Um, so, you know, just by me being able to step into the power of my potential and continue, continue to grow. I have my own company now. And that's what I do is, you know, I, you know, my my target audience, women, we, we have so much potential and so many things get in our way. Just life gets in our way. Everything, you know, gets gets in our way. So like I said, this, for me to really start stepping into my potential, you know, at six years old and continue to do that. Um, and again, did not realize that that's why, you know, the direction my career went. But again, you know, I like I said, you know, to little Cindy, I made it. I did it. We did it completely. And that's when, you know, when, when I work with, you know, when I work with women, that's what I want them to have. That's what I want them to feel also is, oh my gosh, all of this, we all have all this baggage. We have all this, this stuff that continues to try to, you know, keep us small, push us down. And that's what, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I, I look at, oh my gosh, you know, I grew up in the middle of a farm and you know, in, in the Midwest in the United States. And, you know, what, what, what I, you know, what the perseverance that I had, I want, I want everybody to have that. It's nice. And when you, yes. you start to work with uh, women um, to, to have them, to, to uh, bring out, uh, bring from themselves the best, and so what was your question again? Uh, when, uh, how, uh, when, you, when did you start to work with women to, to have them? Okay. So um, again, I've always, you know, looking, I've always been in the whole, the whole education training piece. Um, but, and I ended up working in three global manufacturing organizations <laughs> in the whole, in that whole piece. So it was 2011. So 13 years ago, I left the corporate world and started my own business. And it's making performance matter and spent, you know, about you know nine years probably working with small to medium sized organizations to help them really develop their people and, and coach managers on how to coach and to have these conversations on performance. But again, it was I've had so many people that have been told me over the years, Cindy, you should write a book. And it's one of these, of, I have no idea. But I'd write a book. What do you mean I should write a book? But uh, yeah, I was in a global mastermind group. And one of the ladies was from England, Karen, Karen Packwood. And, um, you know, her background, She's she's been a teacher. She's um, been a pastor. She's clairvoyant. She's getting her doctorate degree in creative writing. So one day after our mastermind group was finished, I said to Karen, would you stay on just for a little bit? And what I said to her at that time was, 
you know, there's been so many people, Karen, including you, who keep telling me I should write a book. And I said, and I think I'm supposed to be working with you. And I think I'm supposed to be working with women specifically. And so that's that's what that's what started all of this. Um, and uh, again, you know, when she wanted to include my story in the book, and it's woven throughout, um, I to begin with didn't want to share it because again, that had I I hadn't shared it at all. And by now I have so many friends that have known me since like before I, you know, as a little girl, they're now saying, how did, why did we never know this? Well, because it made me feel less. It made me feel, you know, I wasn't as good as the other kids. So it's kind of over the past, you know, three, four years has really been when I've, you know, been heading towards working with women. Um, and working with the tools that I have used, you know, throughout my life and, and through, my, you know, my various uh, jobs. Uh, but it it was time. I'm glad Karen pushed me because I pushed me to share it because it just it just shows you that, you know, we have so much potential. We can do this. We really can do this. And uh, your book is so unique, I think, because uh, it's not just a book. Can you explain us? <laughs> yes. I happen to have it here. Imagine that. I happen to have it here at the Shift Cafe, How to Step into the Power of Your Potential. So in the Shift Cafe, you go on this imaginary nature journey. Uh, in, so that you can identify what you want in life, why you want it, and how to develop the courage to achieve it. So as I was working on this, the pandemic hit, you know, hit all of us back, you know, four, four, four and a half years ago. And all of the activities that I was in stopped. And I thought, I'm going to be going crazy because all of these things I was doing, I couldn't do. So one day I said to my husband, I think I want to start painting. And what he said was, we're going immediately to get supplies <laughs> because he knew I was going to drive him crazy. So <laughs> I, I painted this. This is, this your... is my painting. Yes. Wow. This, this nice. is my painting. painting. So as I'm sitting here right now, I look out on and I see right now, and it's called a shag bark hickory tree. You can see the shaggy bark. I see that right now. And the rest of this represents our farm. My brother and I have a family farm. Um, we have four, 400 acres of farmland and then 60, 60 acres of native woods. So that's what all of this is. Here is in the Shift Cafe. Here's your Shift Cafe table with your Super Deluxe Delight coffee and your journal here so that you can work through and, and write. But yes, so again, this, this is, um, yeah, this as I'm sure, I, as I'm sure with your book, it evolves and continues to evolve. And in fact, you know, I, I just recently, I told you I ordered your book and I, I got it. I looked at it and I'm thinking, they remind me of each other. <laughs> as far as, you know, there's, you know, there there's prompts for people to write, you know, there's times to journal, there's times to ask questions. And um, like I said, your your book and my book remind me of each other as far as how they're set up, which I thought was really interesting when I started looking at yours. Oh, yes, when I started to to uh, read yours, I saw how you also uh, asking uh, to journal and to you have you giving tasks like like me in my book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And in fact, I really like that on the front, you said book, guide, journal, and tasks. And I'm thinking, yes, I love that. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, because yes. I thought uh, if if just I wrote about heart aging, how to, to get back in shape over 40, 50, or 60, it's not enough just to read because we read a lot of things and we said, oh, it's a good thing. And we 
we just forget later. But if we had to write in something, journaling something, it's a little different because our mind, it's taking more seriously, I think. Exactly. And from, again, having been a teacher one way or other my entire life, the more senses that you involve when you're learning, the you will have a better chance of remembering. So yeah, so we read. And that's what so much is. You know, we read, so we're using, you know, our, our sight. But then when we write, we now we're using, you know, we're, you know, we're using our hands and, you know, we're using the sense of feel. And um, then if you can talk to somebody about it, now you're using more senses, more of your senses than ever. So like I said, from the education side, the more senses you in, you can involve when you're learning something. I mean, so you're eating something healthy as you're reading your book. Boy, that's inviting, you know, that's involving the sense of taste. But the more senses that you can involve, the more likely you are to remember what you're what you're learning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's why like, I didn't, uh, I just started to read your book, but uh, I will read the end yeah, because I, I saw, ooh, I had to journal, so it I won't just read it. I had to do it. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. So, and, uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, yes. I just say, so, so a couple things over the past 10 or 12 years, um, you know, it, you know, what well, to begin with, it, it was that counselor saying back when I met my husband quite a while, quite a long, you know, have, have you, you know, have you, you know, you have an abandonment fear. And, um, so I had to prove to myself that I could do this, that I could go and stay. So for the company, the last, the last um, company that I worked for, the parent company is in Germany. And so I was here in the United States corporate office. And so I had to travel by myself. You know, I remember the first time I drove, I trapped, you know, I flew there. Um, I think at that time I went to, uh, to Brussels. That was huge for me because, again, here's this little girl, you know, with this abandonment fear. Um, uh, but I had to prove to myself I could do that. And I did. And then last year, almost two years ago, uh, I ended up, we have stairs in our house and I missed a step and I broke I broke my femur into two pieces. <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we couldn't, we couldn't live, we couldn't come back to the house for a while because I couldn't put any um, weight on my, you know, on my leg. So we had, we had a place in um, the Southwest of United States um, in Arizona, one floor. So my husband drove out there and my daughter-in-law flew to get me out there. And I did my physical therapy and everything out there. And we were out there about five months. So when it came time to to drive, to come back, I told my husband, I said, you know, I'm spending so much time walking in the pool and everything out there. I think I'm going to stay a month out here. So my little dog and I stayed a month. And again, this was a person that wouldn't even, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't, I didn't even want to go spend the night with my family. So there's been several things here that, that I, I pushed myself to do because I, I, I had to know Cindy, you can do this. Not something you want to do all the time, but you can do this. So that's that's been a that was a big step, a huge step, uh, because early in my career I left a job because I was going to have to travel overnight for training, and I I resigned. It's called I can't do this. Hmm. So again, you know, this whole pushing ourselves out of the comfort zone. Um, yes, and. Uh, and again, you know, those, 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 I, I, I had to, do, I had to do those, even though I was this little girl inside, this little Cindy inside was saying, don't do this. I, it was called, okay, I'm a big girl now. I, I know why I have this, you know, this fear and I had to prove I, not to anybody else. I had to prove to me I could do it. And I did it. So like I said, so my little, my little dog and I were there by ourselves for a month, so huge, again, for someone that left a job because I was gonna to have to travel overnight. <laughs> yes, 
we sometimes have to step out of our comfort zone to do something new to to develop ourselves i think yes yes and and i have a lot of people uh you know a lot of the women that i work with you know we get we get stuck you know we get stuck and you know as i'm working with them and talking to them about i talk about tiny shifts shifts you know produce can produce huge results so one thing I always ask them to, I always ask them to think about, I said, okay, so I want you to think about if you do this, what's the best thing that could happen? And what's the worst thing that could happen? And mm -hmm. so that was really what, you know, that that's really how I live my life. And in looking at the worst thing, okay, can you live with that? Well, part of it, okay, which part of it can you live with? So, like I said, that's that's what I had to ask myself also. So, what's the best thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? You know, over you know, last last year when I stayed for a month out there, you know, my worst thing was, you know, I'm going to be really lonely. Why well, have friends out there? So it's called okay, plan some time, you know, with them. You know, I have, um, you know, I you know, I met I met people at the pool that I was walking in. Plan time. You know, plan time with them, spend time writing. So like I said, I really have always tried to look at what's the best thing and what's the worst thing. Can you handle that? Okay. Or I can handle part of it. Okay. Which part? I can handle this part. All right. What do you want to do about over here? So like I said, that's, that's one thing that I have to ask my, I've always asked myself that. And I didn't, and that's one thing when I work with women, again, I talk about, let's look at this up front. So you have this fear out of the way. What's the worst thing that can happen? You've identified it already. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I was, I didn't like to uh, go live or or, or to or, or in my group or or anywhere. Or just I didn't like to be in front of the camera. You know, then then I uh, started. To make podcasts, you know, because <laughs> I had to. I I knew myself that I wouldn't yeah. do it. Any, uh, I wouldn't do it. Exactly. In other cases. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and and that's okay. that's one thing also that I've had I've had to had to work on because I don't like I don't like being in front of the camera. Um, and so that that's that's one thing. But again, you know, it's I, th I think if you know up front what's the best and what's the worst, then you can then you can have some plans for. OK, so if this you know, if I got lonely enough, if I got lonely, I have friends out there. You know, if I got lonely, you know, I I know what to do. So, so again, that's that's really helping us also, you know, stay Oh, it was a little problem with connection. Can you uh, repeat last st uh, sentence? Okay. Um, yeah, because I think we're yeah we're having some kind of getting stuck here at times. You know, you know, I I think this is necessary for you to you know step out of your comfort zone and take some of these risks. If you you know if I've identified up front, I already know. You know, what's the worst that could happen? I'm going to get really, really lonely. All right. Identify up front. So what, when that happens, what am I going to do? I already have it planned out. Yes. <laughs> it's okay if we have always a little plans, not just the big one, just to go step by step. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, and like I said, I mean, it, it was... I had my dog there, so that helped. I had my little guy there with me. <laughs> so I wasn't completely alone. I had, you know, I I had Griffin with me. Um, tell me if you could go back in time and uh, you could uh, advise to your to yourself something. What would, would it be? Oh. oh, good question. Wow. Um, 
I th- it, it, it would have been to not hide my heart surgery. Um, because even, you know, even, you know, in, in elementary school, we would have health class. And as soon as we got our books, I would look through it and it'd be, oh no, there's a section on the circulatory system, which means they're going to talk about the heart. And I was at, you know, I lived on a farm. I was at a small school. So all the teachers knew what had happened. So each year when we would get to the chapter on the circulatory system, invariably the teacher, each teacher would say, Cindy, you had a heart surgery. Talk to us about it. My whole thing was no, 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 Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk to you. So it would be to, to not hide this, um, to, yeah, to, you know, again, you know, I felt like, I felt very inferior because of that, but it would be, you know, Cindy, to realize that you persevered. I mean, this was huge. There were children that, that died on, you know, on the operating table and everything, but it would be to, to not hide this. By now I look at beautiful thing that happened at the time, you know, I didn't at all, but yeah, it would, it would be to, to not be so ashamed of being different. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah. um, like, at, and what is were, the, yes? Go, no, go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to ask what is your message to my listener, to women? What is <laughs> What is your message to my listener? To your listener. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, every single listeners, every single one of you have so much potential. You have so much inner power. And, in, you know, we, we have so much power in here. And it doesn't matter about all of these other people and other events that, that tell you you're not enough because you are enough. So, I talk about tiny shifts, tiny, tiny steps. Um, you, know, you don't have to tackle everything at once. So imagine you're on an ocean liner and the captain has to change directions one degree, one shift, a tiny, tiny shift. Okay. It doesn't seem like much at the time, but over time, you know, it starts as, and then you can make another shift. <clears throat> So it's, you know, start making these tiny, tiny shifts because these tiny shifts can lead to such huge results. You know, I've, I've seen it. You've seen it. I know with the people you work with, you know, I've seen it, these tiny shifts. So yes, don't be, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to take these tiny shifts because guaranteed they're going to, they, you know, they can lead to huge results. Yes, exactly. <laughs> where where would I be if I didn't start anything? <laughs> I didn't try to help others. So <laughs> I had to make little steps. And maybe yes. it's not and, big for somebody else, but for me, it's yes, it's big. Yes, exactly. Big steps. Exactly. Because again, we have so much inner power. Oh my gosh. Every single, you know, every single one of you have so much inner power. You just, you just do. And, um, you know, find someone that you're comfortable with and it may not be, and it may not be a friend because a lot of times friends are not able to do this, but, you know, if, you know, if you meet someone and I've done this so much, you know, I run across someone somewhere and I'm thinking, oh, I would like to, let's have coffee with her or let's, let's schedule, a, you know, a chat. Um, and, you know, there's, so, you know, I always learn something from every single person that I sit and talk with. I learned, I learned something. So again, you know, when you, when you run across someone that you think, oh, I would, you know, she or he I kind of would like to know more about that. Take the chance and do it. Take the chance and find out more from them because it's going to help you grow. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Can you show me your book again? Yes, I will. Yeah. And can you? Yes. Yes. Yes, that 
Can you uh, yeah. mine yeah. too? <laughs> Together? I do what? Your book and my book. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let me get them here because I happen to have both of them right here. Yeah. There we thank go. You. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, you know, you know, the ship cafe, how to step into the power of your potential. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank well, you thank so you much. For, yeah, thank you for this opportunity. You know, um, you know, we've, you know, we were, you know, we're we're in a group together and then, you know, we've had a one-on-one -on -one before. So I'm really glad that you reached out as far as a schedule it. And I'm glad again when you know when your book came and I started looking at it, I'm thinking this this reminds me a lot of the way mine is put together. So I'm, you know, I'm anxious to work through it and and everything. So so thank you so much. It was my pleasure. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>